Praise my soul, the God of heaven, on this, the Lord's day. Welcome to Ascension Lutheran Church in Towson, Maryland, as we worship together in spirit. I'm Pastor Nancy Kraft, and I'm joined today by Ascension's Minister of Music, Joy Bauer, Andy Bauer, Hannah Brown, and Ed Mortimer. I want to remind you that if you would like to receive Holy Communion in person in a way that is safe, we are offering drive-through communion on the parking lot today from 11 o'clock until noon. You don't need to sign up. Just show up with your mask on and remain in your car as we bring Holy Communion to you. We have a wonderful opportunity to learn and grow that's coming up in a couple of weeks. The chair of our social ministry committee, Linda Watts, is here to tell us about it. It's common for white people to arrive at adulthood without ever participating in an in-depth discussion about race. Then when we do try to talk about race, we find that we don't have words to describe what we see and learn that there are racial concepts and terminology unfamiliar to us. All of these things can leave us feeling insecure about how to begin this conversation. People of color are often shocked to discover that a majority of white people rarely, if ever, talk about race, especially as it relates to their own identity. In other words, we don't talk about what it means to be white. Not having to think about our racial identity is a very white experience. Most people of color are forced to consider their racial identity multiple times a day, every day. I recently had the opportunity to do an eight-week anti-racist program. White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo was the first of four books we read. I learned so much from this book, mostly about how hard this topic is for me to deal with and how important it is to have a group of struggling people to share this journey with. If you're interested, I invite you to join Deborah Ward and me to explore this topic. Starting on September 16th, we will meet for six weeks on Wednesday night from 7 to 8.30. See Ascension's private page for more information. Many thanks to Linda Watts and Deborah Ward for leading this group for us. And thanks to all of you for supporting this and all of our ministries at Ascension through your offerings. Your generosity is appreciated. If you'd like to make a gift today, you can go to our website and click the button that says Give. Now we prepare our hearts for worship with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, let us confess our sin. Reconciling God. We confess that we do not trust your abundance, and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit we fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us. And in your spirit, lead us so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Our hymn is Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. In the red ELW, it's number 864. Praise My Soul, the God of Heaven. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and also, also with you.
Let us pray. O oh Lord God, enliven and preserve your church with your perpetual mercy. Without your help, we mortals will fail. Remove far from us everything that is harmful and lead us toward all that gives life and salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Ezekiel. So you mortal, I have made a sentinel for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked ones, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn from their ways, the wicked shall die in their iniquity, but their blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from their ways, and they do not turn from their ways, the wicked shall die of their iniquity, but you will be saved your life. Now you, mortal, say to the house of Israel, Thus you have said, Our transgressions and our sins weigh upon us, and we waste away because of them. How then can we live? Say to them, As I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from their ways and live. Turn back, turn back from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of the two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen to even to the church, let it such a one be to you as Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about whatever, everything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. An announcement from an actual church bulletin read, the peacemaking meeting scheduled for today has been canceled due to a conflict. It might be even funnier if making peace and conflict weren't so difficult for us in the church. 
The thing that may surprise people who are new to the church culture is that people don't seem to be any different in the church than they are in the rest of the world. And that's disappointing because we expect more of people who claim to be doing their best to follow the Jesus way. Jesus himself seemed to realize how challenging it would be for this new faith community that was forming. In Matthew's Gospel, he lays out some very specific instructions for how we should deal with our differences. There's a process that he outlines. If someone offends you, confront them. If that doesn't work, try an intervention. If that fails, cut them off and kick them out. It's pretty straightforward. In our ELCA, this is a part of our model constitution for the congregation, and it's a part of our constitution here at Ascension. It's a way of protecting the church from destructive members. And that is one way of reading this passage from Matthew. But when we read the passage in its context, in all of Matthew 18, it's difficult for us to stop with that interpretation. Back up to the verses right before this, and you'll read about how God is like a shepherd who delights in welcoming the lost sheep into his fold. And there's a warning about despising others, especially those people you think are beneath you. And then the verses that follow today's passage are all about forgiving. Forgiving as many as 70 times seven. In other words, forgiving without limits. It makes me wonder about what Jesus means when he says, after you've talked to someone and warned them and they still won't listen to you, let them be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Maybe Jesus doesn't mean kick them out. After all, look at how Jesus treated Gentiles and tax collectors. Maybe, maybe after we've done all we can and they still won't listen, even then we don't give up on them. So there's a strong possibility that laying down the law and weeding out the troublemakers isn't the point of Jesus' instructions here. It seems more likely, in its context, that the point of today's text is really about connecting with one another and building relationships within community. Matthew gives us these words which no other gospel writer gives us because he knows that relationships within community are difficult. Because going to someone with your concern or grievance is a lot harder than talking about them behind their back. Bringing others to listen closely to what is said takes a lot more courage than posting something on Facebook and working out disputes as a community together, rather than simply dispensing judgment, can be grueling. But that's the work that we are called to do as God's people in community. The reality is that whenever two or three people gather for anything, there's bound to be conflict. The church is no exception to that. Conflict is a part of human experience, and in many ways, conflict can be healthy because it forces us to become more than who we are. There can be no growth in the body of Christ without also experiencing times of disequilibrium. Conflict is not the problem. How we deal with conflict or don't deal with it becomes the problem. These verses from Matthew's Gospel remind us that in the church, we're called to deal with conflict differently than the way that we see it on TV or social media 
in the workplace or the school cafeteria because what we're doing here is about relationships. Think about how it is for two people who are married. It's not just about two individuals, but it's also about the relationship, which has a life of its own. With every decision, every action, it's not just myself that I'm concerned about now. I have to consider how this will affect our relationship. Our Congregation Council has had some extremely difficult decisions to make this summer related to how to ensure the safety of our members during a pandemic, while also meeting the needs of our congregation to gather and engage in ministry. I can't begin to tell you how hard this work has been for our Safe Reopening Task Force and for our Congregation Council. Just think about how difficult it is for us as individuals. No one knows exactly what to do right now. We have to consider all the information that's available to us. And we have to keep up because that information is always changing. We're never quite sure what the right thing to do is. But we do the best that we can. Well, imagine trying to figure this out as a group. Of course, we don't always agree. Some of us tend to be more cautious than others. We've had difficult decisions where people with opposing views feel strongly about their position. While I've participated in these, I admit that I am often anxious. I don't want to drive a wedge between someone else and me. I don't want to see the meeting blow up. I just want us all to get along and agree about everything. And often that's the case, <laughs> but not always. When things get tense, we're faced with a problem and we have strong disagreements about the solution. There's a part of me that just wants to walk away, but I can't because this is my community and we are all in this together. I have been particularly impressed with the leadership of Ascension as we have worked our way through these difficult conversations. A big thanks to Loretta Ishida and Donna Molenkoff. These decisions require a lot of work and everyone hangs in there. No one leaves. No one throws a hissy fit when they don't get their way. We disagree, we, de we debate, and most importantly, we listen, listen, listen. Then we vote. And we haven't always been unanimous in our decisions these days. But once we decide, even if we don't agree with the decision, we continue to be a part of the community. That's the spirit of Matthew 18. That's how it is when we live together in Christian community. It's not all about what I like, what I want, what I prefer, what makes me happy and comfortable, what this church can do for me, and if it doesn't, I'm out of here. It's about the community. It's about trusting in the promise that where two or three of us are gathered together, yes, there is conflict. But even in the midst of our brokenness, in the midst of all of our imperfections, Jesus has promised us that he is in the midst of us.
Our hymn is In All Our Grief. In the red ELW, it's number 615, In All Our Grief. together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Each petition ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy. And the congregation responds, hear our prayer. Unite your church, O God. Grant us the gifts of repentance and reconciliation. Bless the cooperative work of churches in this community. Strengthen ecumenical partnerships. Guide the work of the Lutheran World Federation and the World Council of Churches. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Protect your creation, O God. Teach us ways that do not harm what you have entrusted to our care. Renew and enliven places of suffering from drought, flood, storms, or fires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Turn nations and leaders from ways that lead to death. Shape new paths toward peace and cooperation, teaching us to recognize one another as neighbors. Guide legislators, civil servants, judges, and police toward laws that protect the well-being of all. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. Donna Sue, Jim, John, and all we name before you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all who are affected by the coronavirus and those who care for them, for those who put themselves at risk for the sake of others, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We remember with thanksgiving those who have died in faith. As you equipped them, equip us with your protection and power until with them we see your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust to your mercy through Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, the creator of all life, Jesus Christ, the giver of eternal life, and the Holy Spirit, the power in each and every life, bless each one of us this day and every day. Amen. Our hymn is Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. In the red ELW, it's number 631. And in the green LBW, it's number 315, Love Divine. Yeah. 
in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.